Yeah, well, uh, as a manufacturer, I'm not here, obviously, to sell you products. Uh, I'm here to give you a bit of experience of what we've found over many years uh, dealing with sites, uh, not just new sites, but, as we said, remedial work. Uh, I'm taking a common, uh, sense, common sense approach to basically what we need to do to improve things. Uh, there is a lot of hype, and we've all heard about it, uh, as it's been alluded to, it's a hot potato. Uh, people are blaming others for different aspects of this, and people are frightened as to what the overall costs are going to be in setting up remedial work. Uh, and many problem, uh, you know, there, there has been many tanks. There's obviously many thousands of septic tanks installed, and it can be many because they're in unsuitable areas of discharge for human effluent. Uh, installed without due care and billions, you know, it's just happened. Uh, land is unsuitable for many reasons. There's been high water tables, poor soil conditions, and lack of suitable per uh, permeable soil. And uh, eventually, there is a lack of regulation and customer awareness. These are all points which have been highlighted many times over the years. And um, what I'd like to focus on at the moment is obviously situations where many house owners aren't aware of their responsibility uh, once they've got a septic tank or a sewage treatment plant in. Many house owners have aspired, they've lived in cities, towns where they flush the toilet and everything's gone down the drain and they've forgotten all about it. Their aspiration is to own their own house in the country, uh, move into the country, uh, move into their dream home. But it's been not explained to them that they now have a system on site which does require a certain amount of housekeeping. So if the system goes wrong, why are they likely to fail? It could be because of the age of the unit or the percolation area. We all know that the septic tanks, it's not just a new product, it's been around for many, many years, hundreds of years. Uh, some Victorian tanks will give up after a, period, after a while. Uh, percolation areas, if they've been overloaded, uh, will fail. Uh, maybe the tank is doing more than it was originally designed to do. Incorrect sizing. Uh, Sometimes the tank is only sized for uh, a family, and then all of a sudden you get the uh, granny and uh, different age groups living within the same property. The property maybe has been extended. Uh, people don't take into consideration that the sewage treatment plant or the septic tanks need to look real at that time as well. And also, bad installations. Uh, we will always hear people, the first point, uh, thing they will blame is the builder haven't taken shortcuts. It does happen, but not in every case. Uh, the installations can be bad for various reasons. A bad product, as manufacturers, we get this quite regularly. Uh, once a problem has arisen, the first point of call is that the system is not designed what it's uh, doing what it's supposed to do. So they will come back and blame the manufacturer. In some cases, we have to hold our hands up and say, yes, there's been a fault with it. Uh, but in many cases, it's just perception. And then housekeeping, uh, this is probably the last or probably the, the, the one which occurs most. Uh, it's what is the responsibility of the householder. They, they have this piece of kit in the ground. Uh, they do have a certain amount of responsibility to it. It just doesn't free, freely flow off the site into the main sewers any longer. Uh, they purchase the house, they have either a septic tank or a sewage treatment plant. And they have to be aware of that and what is a necessity to keep that functioning properly. Uh, housekeeping. We have two areas, obviously. Septic tanks are being talked about, but we also have sewage treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants. But a septic tank, what does a septic tank do? Septic tank separates and traps the heavy solids from the household and allows the liquid to be treated in a designed percolation area. It's a simple piece of kit. It needs to be sludged, and the minimum requirement is once a year. Some manufacturers will say larger tanks they have, and maybe twice a year. But I think going forward, the government is on an insistence where there should be a record kept, and at the very minimum, a tank should be desludged once a year. 
The problem is also then arises what do we put into the septic tank? Uh, simple things like using a waste disposal unit. You, know, you might have a septic tank, you have a dream house, you have a large family, modern kitchen, put a waste disposal unit in. A waste disposal unit can in fact add about 30% more volume, solid volume, to a septic tank than it was originally designed for. So that in itself can cause the problem that the storage capacity drops, you might need to have it emptied more frequently. Uh, avoid excess uses of bleach, nappy disinfectants, etc. Uh, bleaches, nappy disinfectants are there to kill bacteria. Uh, that's what's going to happen if it gets down, it'll get probably through the tank into the soil conditions where you're expecting to use the soil, uh, the good soil conditions that you find that you have on site, and suddenly you're killing it off by overloading it with uh, bleaches or likes of nappy disinfectants. Don't dispose of any chemicals, medicines, brush cleaners, paint, etc. All these things can have not only an adverse effect on the whatever biomass you're building up in the septic tank, but most of them would be like hypercarbon, so they will tend to float, they'll float through the septic tank and get into the percolation area. So key in that can damage the percolation area. Uh, the treatment efficiency. Don't allow excess amounts of grease into the drains. Uh, some people, when they finish the fry up in the morning, will just empty the cooking oil with the fat from the frying pan straight into the sink. It's easy way to dispose of it. Again, hypercarbons, they will tend to not only damage the tank, and stop any what or little, little oxygen you might have in the tank, but they'll float through the tank into the percolation area. Once the flow stops, the grease will settle out and block up the percolation. So you, you damage that immediately. And don't allow nappies, sanitary tiles, etc. It just adds more bulk. Uh, I know a lot of them are designed and say that they're biodegradable. Uh, it generally means they'll biodegrade in three or four years. Uh, but if you include them in, or let them be flushed down the toilets, you can end up with uh, more bulk in the tank the tank fills up quicker as a solid matter and needs to be sludged more frequently. And don't allow rainwater into the systems. Uh, we've come across this on many occasions where people build small extensions on to their premises. They have a septic tank there and coaching closer to the septic tank. They have obviously more rainwater coming off the roof. Uh, maybe around the pavement around it, and uh, they feel that the easiest way to get rid of that, rather than taking us to its own percolation, is break it into the existing pipe going to the septic tank. Hydraulically, it will uh, overload the septic tank, it will disturb any solid matter that you have in the septic tank, and you know, if you get storm conditions, all you're going to do is wash the solid matter from the septic tank into the percolation area, again, blocking the percolation area and reducing the life of the expectancy of it. So as a householder, if you can re re refrain from doing many of these here, you will prolong the life of the septic tank. Uh, in many cases, you might find that, you know, if you are excessive in the chemicals and the bleaches, etc., if you cut back, the septic tank will revive itself over a period of time and come back into its normal practice of use. Sewage treatment. A treatment system uh, separates and traps the heavy solids from the household waste and allows the liquid to be treated by introduction of oxygen. It creates colonies of microorganisms uh, and helps break down the pollutants. Two main points to have there is obviously uh, most household systems, single household systems, need to sludge again. Minimal requirements should be once a year to keep it alive. Leaving septic sewage, septic solids in a tank longer than that period of time. Really, you know, it starts to fight against what you're trying to do. You're trying to create by introducing oxygen a live culture for to uh, attack the pollutants, and you leave it, turn the septic effluent into by leaving it, turn it into more septic, and it fights against the cultures you're trying to grow. So, minimum these loads once a year. They're mechanical devices. Uh, you wouldn't need your car to run for a three-year period or a four-year period without regularly maintaining it. Uh, they all have air blowers, they have pumps, they have motors, they all have mechanical and electrical devices into them as part of the process and they do need uh, maintenance. And again, going forward, 
it's good practice to keep a log of both the maintenance and the desludging. So if you have a record and somebody comes knocking on the door, you can at least prove that that has been done. And, you know, as we said previously, we have to realise that we have a piece of kit in the ground, should it be a septic tank or a treatment plant, it does need a certain amount of finance behind it to keep it uh, effective as going forward. 